Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. Might hear a dog barking. My son's, I guess they're fostering a dog. It was barking earlier. Sounded like it's raising a ruckus. So I went over with a flashlight and it took an exception to me being over there. So I came back over here. By that time, the fire had flared up. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a video. Words from a watch fire. I have seen him in the watch fires of a thousand circling camps. And I pray that happens. Um, I actually have a family who's intending on building a literal watchtower. They've followed me enough. They're border clan type people. Just love them to death. Amazing. They're planning on building a watch, literal watchtower with a watch fire in it. And, uh, you know, watch fire on it. And then a search and rescue team down below the watchtower. They're not on a bluff to my knowledge, but they have some pretty high visibility, so that is so exciting. Ephraim's Rescuers, that's the name of the operation. Ephraim's Rescuers. If you have not seen the movie, if you have not watched the movie Ephraim's Rescue, watch it. Find it and watch it on the internet. You can watch it on free on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Okay, what's going on here? We're out of balance. Out of level. Lock it down a little bit there. Okay. So, um, that's my vision is to have search and rescue teams with high visibility spotlights with also with a line of sight LED Morse code system, some kind of signaling system. Morse code would be ideal, but nobody knows how to do Morse code. But there's going to be some young people that can do Morse code, I guarantee you. That's going to happen. So, you have a line of sight like a really high intensity LED with a spotter with a little tube on top of it so you for sighting. So you see a glimpse, a beam in the distance, a light. Like at a certain time, 9 o'clock at night, you fire off a, not a flare, but a, you send a watch fire, like directional watch fire toward the east or toward the west, wherever you're coming from. You send it in the opposite direction. If you're coming from the west, you'd send it to the east, east send it to the west. Does that make sense? North to the south, south to north. But anyway, um, and so the watch fire would see that, watch tower would see that flash of light at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, whatever it is, where it's really, really dark enough to see it. And yet enough light, enough time to, before midnight, before early morning to get something done. So they would signal back and they would have communication by Morse code, by signaling. Could be a simple, really simple system. The Hebrew alphabet would give you enough signals, enough um, ways to communicate, you know. You know, bearing, you give a bearing in degrees or whatever, come to just, you. the people that are coming in would go toward the watch fire, watch, toward the watch tower. This is all written out in my head. And I've got, I've actually wrote a whole chapter of the book, Imperium, the Refugium series. Delirium, Imperium, and Refugium. Four syllables, eight letters, each of them. Look up each word, they're very powerful words in the English language, very, absolutely loaded words. Refugium is a massively loaded word. Um, so anyway, back to my monologue tonight. Um, I'm feeling changes in my life. I'm seeing things. What goes around comes around. Things are coming around again. Um, for the third or fourth or fifth time. Second time at least. And I've seen in my life about 2010, 11, no. I'm trying to think of it. Michael Stockinger, my friend Michael would know. Whatever year he moved here, I think it was 2009, maybe. Going back to that long, I had developed right over here. I could walk over here in two minutes. There's a house over here with a nice porch. Well, it had a nice porch on it. And I would go up there, and that was my homeless camp number camp, homeless camp number one. I'd go up there. There's a big chair there. I'd sit there and make do phone calls and talk to people and pray and just have a blessed time, you know. But it was homeless camp number one. Then down below the house, that was above here where the property I'm on now, down below the house was my homeless camp number two, where I put, did my off-grid, my beyond off-grid interview with the producer and director of Sopec Town. Um, and that was homeless camp number two, where I put up my geodesic dome. It was given to me by John Hurt of Zip Tie Domes. Look them up, Zip Tie Domes. Buy one of his domes and tell him I sent you. They've got tunnel ones, they've got you know chicken coop ones, chicken tractor ones. You can do all kinds of things with them. He can build them out of bamboo now. He found out the bamboo. He realized he built one out of bamboo because somebody there in Tennessee has a whole grove of bamboo 
and he built it out of that and he said it, I could, these could be 10 times bigger than my the ones I do out of PVC. He used about four foot sections for the struts, but you can out of bamboo you can make them twi at least twice as long, 10 foot or better, because it's so much stronger than PVC. So, and on the subject of bamboo, one time I had a teepee and I set it up one time in Stockton, Stockton Black Walnut Festival. For the three tripod poles, I, I used bamboo, cheap, junky river bamboo, cheap, the stuff that rots every year, it breaks down and rots every year. The tips of them were the size of my fingers, the tops of them were, and I banded three of those together with strapping, bungee balls, and then I reinforced that with orange strapping tape, strapping fiber, strapping, yeah, orange shipping strapping, okay, ratchet, ratchet it down, okay. I wrapped them around to spiral it down and, and called it good. And I did three of those for the tripod poles. You have to have three really good tripod poles. That's what I did for my tripod poles. And then for the other, those were just junk, cheap junk bamboo. Then for my 12 other poles, I had two inch fiberglass military poles. Okay, four foot long. I put three or four of those together and made those, those were the other 12 poles to support the weight of the skin. And then I had a piece of hickory. The skin was so heavy, the outside teepee was so heavy because I sprayed it with um, ceramic centispheres with uh, paint. And it was so heavy that I couldn't lift it with anything. So we, I had my little, my youngest son go out in the forest and get a big, long hickory pole. So I tied it to that and we got it up there. We got it set up, actually got it set up. But in the process of that, my first, the first setup was out of whack and it had to be, everything, all the poles had to be adjusted because it wasn't right. You had to be, had to be a certain egg shape, shape. If you know anything about teepees, they'll go into it, you know, not going to go into it at all. Take my word for it. They're very, very complicated, simple and yet complicated. Brilliantly simple. Whew, I should have some water out here, and I don't. I may pause this and do another one, or do a second one. Okay, so because I had to move it, we had to just pick them up and move it with the weight of the teepee on it, with all the poles on it. In the process of doing that, the three cheap little half-inch diameter at the top bamboo poles, three of them, so nine of them total. Three, three, and three. What does the Bible say about three? A threefold cord is not easily broken. Well, threefold bamboo poles are not easily broken either. They broke one of the fiberglass poles in half. They snapped the top tip off. It was an interior tip, but it snapped the fiber and just snapped it right off. Busted it. Two-inch fiberglass pole, which you think would be a lot stronger than bamboo, but it is not. Okay, so anyway, bunny trail. Sorry. That's my bunny trail. Um... No more bunny trails. Okay. Rewind. Okay, so watch fires, TP. This is live so we can say, hey, you're you're talking about this. Okay, so um I got off on TPs for some reason. Oh man. My family. Homeless camp number one, homeless camp number two, homeless camp number three, okay. Geodesic domes, that's where I left off. Geodesic domes, bamboo versus PVC. Bamboo much stronger than, and if you get real bamboo, like Moso. Moso, yeah. Moso bamboo is like construction grade. You can use it for rebar. It's it's rated for construction in the construction industry. You can use it for scaffolding. Maybe not legal here, but in China they do. 100 stories high bamboo scaffolding up that, up that distance. Anyway. Don't get off no, no more bunny trails. Okay, stop it. Okay, no, no, no more bunny trails. No NBT. No bunny trails. No bunny. NBT. NBT. Okay, so homeless camp number two, and then homeless camp number three was where Michael Stockinger spent two weeks when he came here from Massachusetts or Connecticut. 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 Yeah, he came from Connecticut, and then a, a little bit while after that. Uh, a sister or a lady from uh, Massachusetts came here. Both of them left, packed everything, sight unseen, came out here, packed all they owned and drove out here. They met here, there I was with them when they first met, and they fell in love and got married and had a baby. So, there you go. I play matchmaker once in a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so, um, so, homeless camp number one, homeless camp number two, and homeless camp number three. My point is this. I'm thinking about homeless camp number four. No, I'm just kidding. My point is this, though, is that um, when I was sitting up here all those years ago at the house over here on the porch, I realized that I had been 
cast outside the camp. You know, outside the camp is where you put the sinners, the lepers, the criminals. You know, they were driven outside the camp. And it, it does not the Bible say the Messiah was driven outside the camp. He was outside the camp. And it says that he, he was sent unto his own, but his own received him not. And that is the truth of what's been going on in my life for 15 years here. About 15 years, yeah. Because I realized, going back to, like I said, before Michael Sacker got here, he spent the two weeks at homeless camp number three. So I'd already had homeless camp number one, two, and three. He was at number three. And that's where he spent two weeks in a tent. I think it was my tent. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was. A nice tent that I had. And um, anyway, he, I found him a place on a farm, and he went down and helped him. He built himself a cabin from scratch, learned how to do it on YouTube and Internet. Built himself a cabin. When he was done with it, when he moved on, he sold it for like $1,200 to an old couple that needed it. So very cool. So that was a blessing, really a blessing. And now he's in Arkansas on his own 40 acres. His, his son owns 40 acres. His mother bought it and gave it to them. So anyway, that's really cool. Good, good ending to that story as far as Michael and Jacob go. Blessings on them, and may, may God protect them and bless them and cause them to prosper. May His face shine upon them and be gracious unto them and give them peace and salvation and safety and guidance by angels. Okay, so back to my story here. Um, he was sent unto his own, and his own received him not. So, one time at the house, um, I will say my ex-wife, stood over me like mocking and saying, well, the Bible says that prophets are not without honor except in their own hometown or their own home. So you should just expect to be treated like this. Because she knew that, you know, there's such a abusive, abrasive, and nasty, and, you know, vicious attacking going on that I should be I should be expecting that. Okay, I should have been expecting that, sure. So I realized after I was out up here and almost got my one, one two, and three, that, yeah, I was driven outside the camp, and I knew that. I felt that in my heart and soul, and the Lord showed that to me. You've been driven outside the camp. You went to your own, and your own... I, that, that scripture changed me tonight. You have you have come unto your you were sent unto your own and your own received you not. So I've been rebuffed at every turn and um, I just pray that I leave it, leave it all in the Lord's hands. As for me and my house, 